Andrea Arnold is a British director of four feature films, with a fifth on its way. The two I will be focusing on for this video essay are Fish Tank and American Honey. Fish Tank follows a 15 year old troublemaker named Maya who lives in a housing project and becomes close to the boyfriend of her uncaring mother. She dreams of escaping the housing project and becoming a dancer. American Honey is the story of Star, a girl who abandons her poverty-stricken life of searching through bins for food and caring for two younger siblings in pursuit of the American dream. This leads her across country with a group of people in similar situations to her own as they sell magazine subscriptions door to door. Her films tend to tell stories of often unseen members of society, usually following a character's struggle to break free from their uninspiring lives and find their way in the world. This examination of the lives of lower class people has seen her films be labelled as social realism. And all of her films explore social realism by way of representing life in the lower classes as a form of social and political commentary. She's a loyal director to her crews and works with the same people across the majority of her projects. One such person is her director of photography, Robbie Ryan. Aside from Fish Tank and American Honey, they have worked together on her Oscar winning short film Wasp, her debut feature Red Road, and an adaptation of Wuthering Heights. He has also worked with director Ken Loach on films such as I, Daniel Blake, and he was Yorgos Lanthimos' cinematographer on The Favourite. He is known for his ability to shoot using only natural light, although he adapts his style to suit the needs of whichever director he is working with. When shooting with Andrea Arnold, this means adopting a 4-3 aspect ratio, which is Arnold's favourite. The narrow frame focuses the viewer's attention on the action and stops them from being distracted by less important information on the edge of the screen. In a film like American Honey, it's especially interesting in that by framing in 4-3 she is cropping out vast landscapes in favour of feeling close to the characters. It creates the impression of characters being figuratively trapped in this confined and claustrophobic framing. It's a portrait frame which is perfect for showing a single character and since her films always follow one main protagonist, this highlights that character as the most important by allowing them to dominate this space. In her words, it gives them real respect and importance. It's a very human frame. Similarly, her films are always shot from only one character's perspective, again lending to this feeling of intimacy and one where an audience can live vicariously through the protagonist's experiences. Robbie Ryan says, We never see any of the other characters on their own. Everything is seen from Maya's perspective. This in itself gives this idea of reality. In a way, the viewer is placed as the character of Maya. Like this scene, where Connor puts Maya to bed. We see POV shots taken through Maya's arm, and we can hear Connor's breath. This works alongside the use of handheld camera, keeping the camera close to the characters and moving between them, making the viewer feel part of the scene, much like in a documentary film. But you can't dance this fast. I'm back. Get up. I've got no shoes on. Excuses. Come on. Get up on that thing. Handheld camera gives the footage a jerky nature which mirrors the unstable nature of the characters' lives. Arnold wants scenes to be shot instinctively, without planning, but instead with her cinematographer following the action spontaneously, reacting to what is happening in front of him. She doesn't like her work to be too controlled, blocking of a scene is kept organic and she doesn't use a shot list or plan on using specific lenses. Instead, she experiments to find the best look on the day. Obviously, this is more possible when you're blessed with a bigger budget and less time pressure on a shoot. What are you doing? Jump in the car, jump in the car.
In order to get the best performances from her actors, she shoots all of her films in sequence. This way, the actors have experienced the film as it has unfolded, and so they understand their characters and the situation of all their scenes better. Thus, they know how to perform and how their character ought to feel. This is an especially useful technique to use when working with inexperienced actors. For example, this opening scene in Fish Tank instantly sets up Maya as being an aggressive character who has many enemies in her life. Kaylee, it's May. What's going on? I've left like three messages. I said sorry, didn't I? You know what I'm like. I was pissed off. Bring me back, you bitch. In American Honey, they never did the same take twice, and nor were scenes rehearsed. Actors were given the script on the day, and this is what they would shoot. Scripts were often very loosely plotted scenes, and actors would improvise their way through them, hitting specific plot points or delivering certain lines of dialogue. This can create difficulties in the editing room, but it keeps everything fresh on screen. This is one of the main reasons why they decided to shoot digitally. Arnold's favourite camera during test shooting was a 35mm camera, but her improvisational, chaotic style and working with non-actors lends itself to shooting with experimentation and numerous takes, which would not have been possible were they to have shot on film due to the expenses involved in doing so. When asked why she shoots in a realistic style, Arnold said, I want to make it feel like we've dropped in on some people's lives. With a lot of films, people are sitting on the outside looking in. But I want the audience to get a bit more intimately involved with what's going on. A number of the scenes shot in the van were not scripted at all, but were simply recordings of the MAG crew cast members being themselves. In, uh, in Montana, these two men had grabbed this woman, killed her, raped her, and then drove to this town, and bought a shovel at Walmart, buried her in this town, and then returned the shovel at Walmart. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Now. Imagery is used to convey the character's situation. Arnold uses a lot of shots of nature and animals or insects to portray the freedom which her characters desire. They act as a metaphor, representing the way in which characters are trapped and long to be set free. Conversely, often in Fish Tank, Maya is seen walking past fences or gates or climbing these fences. These give an impression of her being in a prison, the prison of her situation, or of being trapped in the fish tank, which is the estate where she lives. With all of these stylistic factors in mind, I'm going to leave you with a scene I directed inspired by the films of Andrea Arnold. I say inspired by because you'll notice that I haven't used the 4-3 aspect ratio. Instead of taking the elements of her directing which I like, and use them to make a scene from the kind of film which I might make myself. So here's a few clips from the scene that you're about to see. It follows a girl who's trying to break into Luna Park at Coney Island. She's carrying a plastic bag with some kind of tools which she can use to break into the ticket booth so that she can rob it. This isn't meant to be a standalone short film, it's more just a scene from something which would be part of a bigger whole. And here it is. <laughs> 